God is saying to you today, I know there is a lot on your mind right now, but you know what? Lay them all at my feet and leave them there. Surrender them by faith and keep moving forward. Worry no more about what you cannot handle. You don't have to fear the impossible things. I've got them covered. And just so you know, I am removing the obstacles that you're worried about. When I'm done with you, you'll see why your patience is your greatest asset. I am putting things all together for your good. Come to me and rest in my presence. As you ponder the majestic mystery of the Incarnation, relax in my everlasting arms. I am the only person who was ever sired by the Holy Spirit. This is beyond your understanding. Instead of trying to comprehend my Incarnation intellectually, learn from the example of the wise men. They followed the lead of a speck star, then fell down in humble worship when they found me. Praise and worship are the best responses to the wonder of my being. Sing praises to my holy name. Gaze at me in silent adoration. Look for a star of guidance in your own life and be willing to follow wherever I lead. I am the light from on high that dawns upon you to guide your feet into the way of peace. I am with you always. These were the last words I spoke before ascending into heaven. I con to proclaim this promise to all who will listen. People respond to my continual presence in various ways. Most Christians accept this teaching as truth, but ignore it in their daily living. Some ill-taught or wounded believers fear, and may even resent, my awareness of all they do, say, and think. A few people center their lives around this glorious promise and find themselves blessed beyond all expectations. When my presence is the focal point of your consciousness, all the pieces of your life fall into place. As you gaze at me through the eyes of your heart, you can see the world around you from my perspective. The fact that I am with you makes every moment of your life meaningful. I draw near you in the present moment. Seek to enjoy my presence in the present. Trust and thankful. Ness are your best allies in this quest. When you wallow in the past or worry about the future, your awareness of me grows dim. But the more you trust me, the more fully you can live in the present, where my presence awaits you always. Speak to me frequently. I trust you, Jesus. I love you, O Lord, my strength. These short prayers keep you close to me, confident that I'm lovingly watching over you. It's important for you to grow not only more trusting, but more thankful. A grateful attitude is essential for living near me. Ingratitude is offensive to me, and it drags you down both spiritually and emotionally. Remember that you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. No matter what is happening in your life or in the world, this means that you have a constant, unshakable reason to be thankful. Stay anchored to me and enjoy my presence by giving thanks in all circumstances. When your world looks dark and threat, come to me. Pour out your heart to me, knowing that I'm listening and I care. Find comfort in my sovereignty. I'm in control even when global events look terribly out of control. Actually, many things are not as they should be, not as they were created to be. You do well to yearn for perfect goodness. Someday those longings will be wonderfully satisfied. Consider the prophet Habakkuk as he awaited the Babylonian invasion of Judah. He knew the attack would be brutal, and he wrestled deeply with this pro-knowledge. Finally, though, he wrote a hymn of absolute confidence in me. After describing utterly desperate circumstances, he concluded, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Feel free to wrestle with me about your concerns. 
But remember that the goal is to come to a place of confident trust and transcendent joy. You won't understand my mysterious ways, but you can find hope and help in my presence. I am your strength. Trust me to lead you. Step by step through this day, I provide sufficient light for only one day at a time. If you try to look into the future, you will find yourself peering into darkness. My face shines upon you only in the present. This is where you find my unfailing, unquenchable love. My love for you is even stronger than the bond between a mother and her baby. Though she may forget the baby at her breast, I will not forget you. You are so precious to me that I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Forgetting you is out of the question. I want you to really come to know practically, through experience my love, which far surpasses mere knowledge. The Holy Spirit, who lives in your innermost being, will help you. Ask Him to fill you up completely with my fullness, so that you may have the richest measure of the Divine Presence, becoming a body wholly filled and flooded with me. Thus you can experience my love in full measure. Worship me in the beauty of holiness. All true beauty reflects some of who I am. I am working my ways in you, the divine artist creating loveliness within your being. My main work is to clear out debris and clutter, making room for my spirit to take full possession. Collaborate with me in this effort by being willing to let go of anything I choose to take away. I know what you need, and I have promised to provide all of that abundantly. Your sense of security must not rest in your post, sessions, or in things going your way. I am training you to depend on me alone, finding fulfillment in my presence. This entails being satisfied with much or with little, accepting either as my will for the moment. Instead of grasping and controlling, you are learning to release and receive. Cultivate this receptive stance by trusting me in every situation. I am able to do far beyond all that you ask or imagine, Come to me with positive expectations, knowing that there is no limit to what I can accomplish. Ask my spirit to control your mind so that you can think great thoughts of me. Do not be discouraged by the fact that many of your prayers are yet unanswered. Time is a trainer, teaching you to wait upon me, to trust me in the dark. The more extreme your circumstances, the more likely you are to see my power and glory at work in the situation. Instead of letting difficulties draw you into worrying, try to view them as setting the scene for my glorious intervention. Keep your eyes and your mind wide open to all that I am doing in your life. I love the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector, whose very was associated with sin. Yet when he heard Jesus was coming to town, he ran to meet him. Crowds blocked his view until he spotted a tree. There the story took a radical turn. Jesus sees everything, so I doubt he was surprised to find the tax man straddling a branch overhead. But in this story, it's not Jesus or Zacchaeus that captures my attention, it's the tree. Because God had planted it years earlier for that specific purpose, to grow until one day a short man in need of salvation would climb it to see his son. God's wisdom astounds me that he cares so much about one small sinner leaves me in awe. It's time I recognize the trees in my life, the people and things Jesus has planted in the path of my salvation. Years ago, before I knew Christ, a friend invited me to an Inten International Bible study. I attended, and over time I grew to love Jesus and gave my life to Him. Thirty years later, I led a group in that very same Bible study. Who was the tree here? My friend? The study itself? Being in the Word daily? 
I think Jesus planted an entire forest for my short, scrawny soul. Now it's my turn to be a tree. Who can I pull up out of the world's cares and help him or her see the Savior? Think about the people I have brought into your life. They in why members of your immediate and extended family, friends, and people at work or at school. It includes people you have a good relationship with and those with whom you have struggled. Are you showing kindness to them without conditions, as the Father and I have shown kindness to you? Do you extend mercy to those who deserve your scorn? Have you forgiven those who offended you, releasing them from your judgment? Do you work to meet the needs of others? Do you bless your enemies and pray for those who abused you? Have you shown compassion, even to people who have done nothing to deserve it? Do you extend never-ending patience to Pew, pull the way my father and I extend it to you? Do you reach out to others the way we reach out to you? Child, regardless of how you may have failed in these matters, I want you to follow me by doing these things in the future. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. Luke 6, 47 to 48. While I was on earth, I was the light of the world. My life demonstrated who God is and my words proclaimed all that he desires. Those who don't know me are lost in darkness. Child, you and all my followers are now the lights in the world. Since those in darkness can't see me, you are their only hope of finding me. If you let your light shine, they can see my love in the way you honor them. They can see my mercy in the way you deal with their faults. They can see my forgiveness in the way you forgive them. In you, they can find a faithful friend who gives them a glimpse of my unconditional love. In you, they can see righteous behavior that rises above the moral depravity of the world. In you, they can see generosity instead of greed, contentment instead of envy, and peace instead of aggression. In you, they can see concern instead of indifference. Be my light, so others may see me in you. Are you continually living in defeat? Do even small challenges throw you off balance? It may be time to examine what you believe. Your beliefs form a filter through which you evaluate what you experience so if trials cause you to question God's character and plan, it may be because of the doctrines you live by. For example, if you think you can lose your salvation, it'll be diff to trust the Father. You'll never really know if you're pleasing to Him. But if you accept that your eternal life is absolutely secure as Scripture testifies, you'll feel more confident because you'll realize nothing can separate you from His love Romans 8, 38, 39. This is why it's crucial to know what you believe and base your convictions on God's word alone. Doing so will prevent you from being misled or intimidated. Therefore, saturate your mind with scripture and allow the Lord to surface any beliefs that don't align with his word. Certainly, as you learn the truth, it will strengthen you and set you free. You were born into my kingdom. It was only natural for you to judge, criticize, and condemn others for their faults and wrongdoings. But dear one, that was then. When you were born again, you became a vessel of mercy. You were spared all of my fay. There's righteous judgment, condemnation, and punishment for your sins. Your debt to God was fully paid by my death on the cross. Though you were dead in sin, the Holy Spirit brought you to life. In spite of all your sinful thoughts, words, and deeds, my Father has shown his tender mercies toward you in ways you can't imagine. Knowing everything he has done for you, 
Can you understand why I want you to be a reflection of His grace and mercy to others? You are His light in this dark world. If people don't see His mercy in you, they may never see it anywhere else. Stop focusing on the failings and faults of others and instead look for ways to demonstrate His grace to them. If you must correct them, do so in humility, with love and gentleness. Spend more time removing the beams from your own eye rather than noticing the tiny splinters in the eyes of others. I know there are many times when you are discouraged and downhearted. I know you often suffer at the hands of those who seem to have no desire for God. I know you see how they are rewarded with the treasures of this world, and yet their lives are centered on themselves. Surely you must wonder, why do they receive blessings that seem to be withheld from me? The truth is, they will someday lose everything they value the most, and when they die, they will experience the agony of being eternally separated from the light and kingdom of God. They will receive eternal condemnation for their sins. Their joy and glory are but for a moment. This is not true for my sheep. Their sacrifices in this life are only momentary. Child, you too will leave behind every earthly treasure you value. You too will fall asleep in death but you will wake up in heaven, and you can't begin to imagine my Father's love that will welcome you. It will be yours forever. Wait till you see what He has prepared for you. It will be worth it all. It's only natural to be afraid of any harm, especially death. But if you will follow me, I will lead you out of your fears into faith. Throughout your life you will be confronted by fear, but when you see my Father and me as we really are, and when you see life and your circumstances from our perspective, overcoming fear will come easily. I gave my life on the cross to give you eternal life. When you believed in me and were born again, my Father and I adopted you into our family. So even your death will not be a tragedy, but a welcomed new beginning. A sparrow doesn't fall to the ground apart from the Father's will and care. He cares for you infinitely more than many sparrows. Child, when you are afraid, it is because you are foe on the things of this life that are temporary. Shift your focus and bind your heart to me. Fill your heart with my words. I want to put my perspective into your mind and my courage into your heart. Don't be afraid. The story of Peter flailing as he walked on the waves to Jesus is familiar, but it's interesting to think what the patriarch Joseph would have done had he been in Peter's place. Peter started out strongly, but then took his eyes off Jesus. Matthew 14, 30, 31. It's hard to imagine Joseph doing anything other than walking straight to Jesus. No doubt he had his down moments over the years, but his reconciling words to his brothers show his constant focus on God. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to save many people alive. Genesis 50, 20, NKJV. To be sure, Joseph's situation gave him little choice other than to trust God. It was either sink or swim, so he kept paddling. Peter demonstrated a greater fear of his circumstances than of disappointing God, and he sank. Similarly, when Pharaoh ordered the Hebrew midwives to kill any male babies, they refused, trusting God, who dealt well with them. Exodus 1.20 NKJV Fearing God more than men, even when your life is at stake, results in blessing, so take the long view on God's promises. He's with you in every challenge, so keep your eyes on Him. Getting to know God intimately requires regular study of His Word, spending time talking with Him in prayer, and choosing to believe He loves you and has a great plan for you. It's about inviting God into every facet of your life. There will be days when you don't feel like praying, reading the Word, or serving God, 
and there will be days when you don't feel God's presence. These are the days when you simply refuse to live controlled by your feelings. Instead, ask God to help you walk in obedience and submit to his word, whether you feel like it or not. I often say that if we truly desire to live victoriously, then we must be willing to do what is right when it feels wrong. I have promised to meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. Your deepest, most constant need is for my peace. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart where I live, but there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, unbelief. I am the gardener and I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine the light of my presence directly into your heart. In this heavy light, peace grows abundantly and weeds shrivel up. I also send trials into your life. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for troublesome situations. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials you endure. I am able to keep you from stumbling. I know how weak you are, how easily you would lose your foot, ing if I were not holding on to you. You are growing in grace, but complete freedom from sin will not be possible as long as you live in this fallen world. So you need my help continually. I am able to present you faultless, blameless, per, unblemished, before the presence of my glory, because I have clothed you with garments of salvation and arrayed you in a robe of righteousness. I want you to wear these royal raiments with confidence. You are absolutely secure because it is my righteousness that saves you, not yours. Exceeding joy is for you and for me. I delight in you now, but this joy will be immeasurably magnified when you join me in glory the jubilation you will experience in heaven is indescribable, far beyond any pleasure you could know in this world. Nothing can rob you of this glorious inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. I want you to know the depth and breadth of my love that surpasses knowledge. There is an enormous difference between knowing me and knowing about me. Similarly, Experiencing my loving presence is vastly different from knowing facts about my character. To experience my presence, you need the empowering work of my spirit. Ask him to strengthen you with power in your inner being so that you can know my love in full me sure. Since the moment of your salvation, I have been alive in your heart. The more room you make for me there, the more I can fill you with my love. There are several ways to expand this space in your heart. It's crucial to take time with me, enjoying my presence and studying my word. It is also vital to stay in calm communication with me. As the Apostle Paul wrote, pray continually. This joyful practice will keep you close to me. Finally, let my love flow through you to others in both your words and your actions. This makes my love in you complete. I am the greatest gift imaginable. When you have me, you have everything you need for this life and the next. I have promised to meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. Yet my loved ones sometimes fail to enjoy the riches I provide because of an ungrateful attitude Instead of rejoicing in all that they have, they long for what they do not have. As a result, they become discontented. I'm training you to practice the sacrifice of thanksgiving, thanking me in all circumstances. First, give thanks for the blessings you can see in your life. Then stop and ponder the awesome gift of knowing me. I am your living God, your loving Savior, your constant companion. No matter how much or how little you have in this world, your relationship with me makes you immeasurably rich. 
So whenever you are counting your blessings, be sure to include the infinite wealth you have in me. Add me into the equation and your gratitude will grow exponentially. Whatever you have me, an incalculable fortune. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to reach 3,000 divine subscribers very soon. Please share this video to your loved ones and share super thanks. Type Amen to affirm, thanks for watching.